Hey everyone. So tonight or today or whatever, I want to discuss uh, the movie Pin. And this has been a movie that I've always found has had a really significant emotional impact on me every time I watch it. It doesn't matter that I've rented it like decades ago for the first time from, uh, I think it was Jumbo Video in their beta section. This tells you how far back that's going. And um, I remember the cover scared the shit out of me with the, the pin, of course, in the wheelchair. We don't know that, of course, just judging by the cover sitting at the top of the stairs with the blood coming down the staircase. I was like, when I was a kid, that cover, that cover as well as the cover for Mortuary scared the hell out of me. Now, Mortuary, Mortuary, sorry, as it turns out, it wasn't the best movie. But this, on the other hand, this movie and the novel that it's based off of are two, like, knockout smash successes. Of course, the novel adds a little more weight and, you know, it, it more, there's more, a greater sense of gravity, of course, to the novel than there is to the film. But... The film doesn't really lose any of its emotional impact. Um, it, it's, it's just as sad and tragic and lonely as the novel sets everything up to be. And I prefer the movie because I saw that first when I was a kid. I, I rented the movie based solely off the strength of its cover. And I read the book a handful of years later. And so I sort of, of course, saw them out of sync, I suppose. Or, I mean, I took part in both of them out of sync. But I loved the performances in the film. I, I loved how, despite how the, the overall sort of serious look at mental illness has sort of been put on the back burner somewhat, like, I did always feel that they could have delved deeper into Leon's mental health issues but this was played more straight like a traditional horror movie which was important at the time because you know there was the 80s and there's still like the slasher craze had sort of already collapsed in on itself by this point and yet this sort of like shadowy figure off in in the background hunting people it was still a very popular thing that movies the horror movie story were doing at this point and so that's sort of what pin kind of goes for there's more like that, that, that entity in the dark that's coming to get you, even though Pin is nothing more than an anatomically correct medical dummy that uh, Leon and Ursula, the two principal characters' father, played by Terry O'Quinn, he uses in his, uh, his medical practice in order to you know, instruct kids and whatnot. He throws his voice using ventriloquism, of course, so it would appear that Pin is alive. Pin, of course, is uh, voiced by Jonathan Banks, of course, from Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul. Um, but it's like, it's really believable. I always found this movie to be grounded completely in reality. Pin is not alive. Leon is the one who makes Pin do everything that Pin does through, you know, Leon figuring out how to throw his voice and um, putting a, as a result of throwing his voice, he also throws a huge part of his personality into Pin. And that's because Leon, um, Leon is, uh, I think, from his, I mean, from the time he was born right up until the time that he actually splits, he was always struggling with a couple personalities inside of him and Penn had always been the dominant personality because Leon had really identified with Penn since his childhood and it's and that's sort of the and this relationship is the thing that gets the whole movie going because Terry O'Quinn has to come back to his uh, office because he forgot some papers because him and his wife are driving out to some doctor conference somewhere. And he finds Leon in his office having this big in-depth discussion about leaving town because Leon's, his parents want him to go to college in another place, in another city and whatever. So he's discussing this with Penn and Terry O'Quinn comes in and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he like looks at Leon like, Jesus, dude. And he's like, fuck this, I'm donating Penn to the foundation. And then... 
it would appear that Penn sort of plays a part in causing the car accident that kills Leon and Ursula's parents. But of course, that's not the case. It's just set up that way. And it's, that's it. That's when the movie really jumps off. Once the parents have been killed and Leon and Ursula are left to their own devices, that is when Leon's mental illness becomes so profoundly pronounced. Him and Pin become besties and um, they start to like ride or die it through the whole movie. All the while, Ursula is becoming more and more aware of the fact that her brother is uh, losing his grip on sanity and he's, he's not really fitting in reality-wise anymore. So she's noticeably very concerned. She begins to date this guy. He's uh, as compassionate and as tolerant as somebody can be towards Leon and his buddy Pin, who by this point, Leon has propped him up in a uh, motorized wheelchair. He's put a suit on Pin. And he's put a skin mask on Pin, effectively making him as human as you or me. And of course this doesn't work. It just makes Pin extra freaky looking. And when Ursula's boyfriend is introduced to Pin, he's like, Hey, Pin, I heard about you. And you can see that he's like, fuck, I'm trying my best here to not freak out at this big dicked fucking <laughs> medical dummy in a suit wearing a skin mask in a fucking wheelchair sitting in front of me here. And about the big dick thing. That is why it is pointed out that it is anatomically correct. Pins got himself a big old dick because at the beginning of the movie, Leon, and this no doubt had a seriously negative impact on his mental wealth, his mental wealth, his mental health. Um, one of his doctor's nurses, I mean his dad's nurses come into the office and proceed to use Pin, get him on Pin on top of her, and she, of course, you know, inserts Pin's rather large cock into her and she bangs Pin in front of Leon. And this causes Leon to kind of hate women, so to speak, which makes no sense, but it makes no sense to me because I'm sane. So maybe it makes some sense if you're crazy. <sighs> so, yeah, this movie's just incredibly sad, actually, at the end of the day. I mean, it's entertaining, it's thrilling, there's twists and there's turns, and you don't really know. I mean, there is a period there, that first time that I saw it, way back when, when I was a little kid, that I was like, is Pin alive? Because at the start, when he causes the car crash, like, the, the dummy sits up. You know, like, did Pin cause his parents, cause their parents to die? Or, you know, is, Pin might be being motorized around, motored around this motorized wheelchair, but is Pin controlling it? I mean, you know Leon's got the RC controller in his hand and shit, so you know he's doing it, but there is sort of that low-key question, at least for the initial viewing, that, that Pin may be real. And of course he's not. And the, the movie concludes with Ursula taking an axe to Pin because Pin has convinced Leon to kill her boyfriend as well as anybody else, it seems, to come between Pin and Leon. And Ursula's boyfriend is still alive. He's not dead. And she kind of freaks out and that's it. Pin gets the ax and this causes Leon's uh, fragile mental state to break completely. And the movie ends with Pin having taken over Leon's physical body, his, uh, not just his physical body, his, his emotional body. There it is. There's a term you don't hear much, a person's emotional body. And that's because it's fucking stupid and I shouldn't have said it. Pin takes over Leon completely. And Pin even asks Ursula when she comes to visit him, like, have you seen Leon? And he's like, because I really miss him. And Ursula's like, yeah, I miss him too. And you can see the pain on her face and you see Pin cry, like he drops a tear. And that is of course, because it's not Pin, it's Leon who has now become the complete embodiment of Pin or Pin has become the complete embodiment of Leon. I don't know, one of the two. Pin's taken over, Leon's gone. And this movie ends on an incredibly somber note. And it's kind of the entire movie summed up in a nutshell is one somber note. Like this, this movie is brutal. There's a lot of weight. There's a, it's a, it's a semi-compassionate story about people struggling with mental illness uh, to a point. Um, it's a traditional, awesome 1980s horror movie to a point. And the two mix together to sort of create this 
perfect storm of a really memorable film dealing with an incredibly sensitive topic. So, fuck. Oh, man, I rambled long on this one. This one's 10 minutes. Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for hanging out with me while I discussed uh, the often forgotten and at this point very little known film, Pin, from I think it's 88, but I'm so wrong whenever I guess these years most of the time. I should stop, but I'm going to guess and say 1988. So like always, if you like this review, don't forget to do something nice for someone. I'm going to go. Have a good night or day or whatever. You're awesome. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.